Hi, this is the YouTube channel Optics Realm, a video podcasting series for optics and lens designs. This is ZMAX Tutorial 12. ZMAX Tutorial 12, my page down wasn't working. And the agenda for today is to model aperture stops and pupils within ZMAX for an imaging lens. First off, what I'd like to do, and I'm not going to go through my presentation, that presentation slide was more to remind me what I'm talking about. For this first case, what I'd like to do is let us assume we've been given an optical system and we don't know where the aperture stop is. Either someone measures it or we go and measure it. We get radii, thickness, lens diameter. We have no idea what is the aperture stop. So I'm going to show you how to do that, how to find that within ZMAX. And in this case, I'm going to use a Cook triplet, ZMAX sample, sequential objectives, this Cook 40 degree triplet. And I like the triplet for this case because the aperture stop is on a lens. Unlike the double gauss, although I love the double gauss design form, the double gauss has an aperture stop in the center. Usually in an iris, it's very apparent where that aperture stop is. So let us assume that we've got this Cook triplet. We've measured it and we've entered in the radii, the thicknesses, and notice the semi-diameters have hard apertures encoded on them. And I can tell because there's this U. If I hit Control Z, uh, ZMAX is going to size this lens to just pass all those, to just pass all those rays. I'm going to hit F3 and F3 and go back to our system. Now we can see the aperture stop is on surface four, but Again, we don't know where that is. So first off, what I'm going to do is make this float by stop size. Now, before I change this, notice the working F number is roughly F5. We're going to go to float by stop size because we're going to be moving the aperture stop around. And I want to turn the ray aiming on. I'm going to go to paraxial. That's going to help us ensure the aperture stop is filled with rays and it eliminates problems from pupil aberrations. Let me, change the, let me change the aperture stop to the front surface. And you can see all the rays are not getting through, so we have to go to set vignetting. We have to set the vignetting under field data, and notice all the vignetting terms are zero. I click set vignetting, and the compression terms, VCX, VCY, are non-zero. That's telling us this is probably not our aperture stop. So uh, let's look at this. I've got to go to a, a 3D layout, and you can see our, all of our rays are getting through. Now, in this case, recall the aperture stop is usually where the chief ray goes through the optical system and limits the on-axis beam. So we can kind of see that that's this back surface right here. So I'm going to jump to surface four and make this our surface stop. And not all the rays get through, so we're going to have to set vignetting again. Control F, set vignetting. Now notice there are the on-axis vignetting terms are not zero. So that's very interesting because this is the case that this lens came up with. I click OK, update the layout. Now one thing I want to point out, this top ray does not get through even though we set vignetting. So let me go back to the, the vignetting, the field dialog box. When you click set vignetting, I believe ZMAX calculates those vignetting terms by iterating on the current vignetting terms. And in some cases, it doesn't work. So you got to clear the vignetting terms, go back to zero, click set vignetting again, and now this ray gets through. It doesn't look like it's in focus because we're now operating at f5.4, but we'll address that later. Recall, our vignetting terms are non-zero. So let's, let's move it to surface three. Make the surface the stop, control F, we're going to clear and set. Now notice the vignetting terms are zero. So this is a more likely candidate for our aperture stop. And all the rays get through. Now, just to get it back in focus, we're going to change the value on that aperture stop until we get to about F, uh, working F5. And there we go, F.506. And you can see now we're in focus. So that's how you locate the aperture stop. Now let's find the entrance pupil, uh, the exit pupil. The simple way to locate the exit pupil is to go to reports and system data. 
and it lists, lists all this general data. One of these here is exit pupil position. It's saying fi minus 52.1. And that is from the image plane. And I was corrected by a coworker. I thought it was from the last surface. But we're going to insert two surfaces. The second one's going to pick up the last so we stay in focus. And now, the, so what I'm going to show you, I'm jumping ahead. What I'm going to show you is another way to locate the exit pupil. And that is by using a chief ray solve. So we're going to where the image is, and I've inserted these two surfaces. I'm going to double click, and I'm going to go to a chief ray height solve. And we want it to be zero. And you can see, indeed, from the image plane, it's 52.1. So this corroborates the general data. So just to point out here, this dummy surface, this location right here is our entrance pupil. Now, I know this looks crazy because we have, you know, element one, element two, element three. We come back from the image plane this distance to this location, and this is our exit pupil. So you can see that if you take this ray and trace it backwards, indeed, it goes through zero or roughly through zero. It's probably vignetting that's causing that. Let's talk about how vignetting can affect that. That was a good segue into it. I'm going to go back to this double gauss 28 degree field of view from the ZMAX sample sequential objectives dialog box. And you can see in this case, we do not have hard apertures like we did in the Cook triplet. So all these apertures are sized by ZMAX to allow all the rays through. And you can see that there's no vignetting. And you can tell that because at each location in the aperture, now we don't have, let's go to ray aiming. <laughs> so you can see, in this case, all the rays go right from um, the top ray from each field, the top and bottom go through the edge of the aperture stop. Now I want to point out, so this, this lens, this lens surface here is sized to pass all the rays. And there's a setting in ZMAX you have to be careful about under the general tab under miscellaneous, the semi-diameter margin in millimeters. Now, before I change that, I want to point out, if I were to go into the merit function and ask the edge thickness, it would report the edge thickness from here to here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this margin, semi-diameter margin on all the rays of one millimeter. So every lens, I'm going to update by double clicking. You can see it adds a millimeter. Now, if I went into the merit function or anywhere and evaluated what the edge thickness is, it would give it from here. So this is a very important parameter to watch out for. I'm going to set it back to zero for purposes of this tutorial. So in this case, let me reiterate, all these rays go through the edge of the aperture stop. Now, I'm going to artificially put an aperture, or not so artificially, put an aperture on this front surface. It's got to be 29 millimeters to pass all the rays. Let's put 25 on there. And you can see now this ray is clipping. Let's just put 25 on the front and the back. This bottom ray is clipping on both the, the two, the second and third fields. I'm going to go to the field data. I'm going to set vignetting. And now you can see all the rays pass through, except now these rays do not go through the edge of the aperture stop. So it's in this case, the aperture stop is just limiting the on-axis bundle. Another key concept is to discuss the chief ray, where the chief ray passes through the optical axes. That is where you're going to have an, uh, a stop or a pupil. So in this, what I did is I pulled up, move too fast, under ZMAX sample, sequential, afocal, afocal rifle scope. This is the system here where you've got a front objective, a near field lens, an eyepiece, and then a relay, and your eye goes back here. In this system, the aperture stop is set on this eyepiece back here. But for our purposes, I'm going to just turn on the marginal and chief rays. So this marginal ray is this ray right here. And where the marginal ray crosses the axes, that's the, the image. So there's an image here. Now notice, because we go through an image, this aperture stop there's a real pupil back on the objective, and that keeps the size of the objective down. And also, this chief ray, it, it goes through the optical axis back here, so there's a pupil where your eye goes. Technically, when you stick your eye up against 
this, your eye becomes the aperture stop. But for sake of design, you've got to pick another location. Sometimes you pick another location for your aperture stop. Let's find the entrance pupil. And for this case, I'm going to go back to this double gauss, this 28 degree field of view double gauss. And the simple way is just to go to reports, um, system data and scroll down and you can see the entrance pupil location is 58 millimeters. So that I think that is from this front surface here. Now I'm going to insert two dummy surfaces. So we are, we're going to go from the front of the lens. We're going to go, we know the, the aperture stop is virtual. So we're going to go inside, find the aperture stop and then come back to the front of the lens. So we don't change our work, our object distance, even though the object distance is at infinity. Now, why am I doing this? I'm doing this so you can find another means to locate the entrance pupil if you don't want to use that drop down. So let's just blindly try and use a chief ray solve. And it's not going to work because the chief ray solve only works if you do it after the aperture stop. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the merit function and I'm going to specify a real ray. And the chief ray has a, an h sub y, that's the field term of 1. This is normalized. And the pupil terms, px, py, are 0. We want a target of 0, and we're going to give it a weight of 1. And I'm going to double, let's see, we want it on surface 2. And you can see this value is negative 14. Now, another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to insert another dummy surface and just put it out five millimeters in front so we can see what's going on. So I'm going to hit the optimizer. And I've got to be careful because I don't want this saw, this variable. I want this as a variable. I'm going to hit Control-Shift-O. One, one target, nine variables. Why are there nine variables? Oh, all the radii. Reports, design, remove all variables, and we want this to be a variable. Control Shift O drives it to zero. And it's saying 58.94. And just let's check. 58.94. So this is corroborating what the system data is saying. And just to reiterate, so here is the entrance pupil. We take these on-axis rays, these red rays. I know there's a lot going on here. These red rays, we project them forward. And you can see that this chief ray, as projected forward, does cross the optical axes. Likewise, we can find pupils between elements. So let me get rid of these. And let us suppose that. We want to know where the pupil is between in this space right here. So normally what you do is you, you trace this chief ray right here and see where it crosses the axes. But let's do that. Let's insert two dummy surfaces. We're going to pick this up to undo our error. And since we don't have the since this is not before the stop, since this is before the stop, we have to use the merit function. So now we want to find it on surface 5. So here is the pupil. If you take now, there's a lot going on. If you take this little piece of the chief ray and project it forward, you see that the, the pupil space is there, which is close to the, uh, the real aperture stop. If you do that in a lens, you have to make sure the dummy surfaces have optical material on them. Here's the ZMAX homework. It's essentially a repeat of the Optics 12 homework. Problem one, I've changed some of the numbers, so be careful. The problems two through six is identical. You just use perfect lens to locate it. Problems seven and eight is to locate the pupil uh, in, in some air spaces. And I will post these on my YouTube site. Thanks for tuning in.
If you have any information or comments relevant to this topic, you can use the channels below or the channels listed here. Otherwise, it's, it's best to put stuff in the YouTube, uh, YouTube comments down below. Thanks for tuning in. Have a good day.